This is the Awakening Word Broadcast, brought to you by Rev. Samson Ajitomobi, the President of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated and Overseer of the Redemption Faith Churches. Tell everybody, prepare. I beg you, stop normal Christianity. Rev. Ajitomobi is called by God with the mandate to reach the unreached at all costs and reawaken the church to our responsibilities. Every gallow the enemy have set up, by the word of God today, they will go into the same pits. Be blessed. What a joy to have you join us in this study again today as we keep building up on doing greater works. Today, we'll be looking at John chapter 14, verse 12 again. And I believe today, there will be a shout of joy in your dwellings. Amen. You will experience God in a new dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So if your Bible is turning, let's read together. John chapter 14, verse number 12. Shall we read? Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. May God bless these words in your heart. We talk about doing greater works. We did examine the great work Jesus did. How he healed the sick, raised the dead, walked upon the waters, did mighty things. And he said, the work I do, you will do if you follow these instructions and this pattern. So largely enough, it is a doable statement. When he says, the things I do, you will do, you can do it. For me, I believe we're not there yet, but we can testify that indeed the work he did, we find ourselves doing them in our own small way and is growing gradually. Now Jesus added to this statement, Apart from doing the work that I do, he now says, greater work shall you do. And he gave reasons for it, because I go to my father. Thought number one, is that greater work is a function of time available to you. Jesus says, I could do a greater work, but I don't have the time because I go to my father. So imagine all the good works Jesus did. With the anointing, setting the captives free, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. Imagine he got 50 years of ministry to do that. And he's done that each day of his life. Because in his three and a half years of ministry, he did that each day. He brought joy to somebody every day that opens. My first prayer for you is that your life will bring joy to many. As they hear you, as they meet you daily, let your life bring joy to somebody. Amen. Jesus wiped the tears of many people. And he did so much in three and a half years that up to today the world can forget him. And he said, that same work I have done, you can do. And you will do greater because you have more time than I have. So if anybody who claims to be a Christian... If you have done three and a half years in your Christian journey, then you are a debtor to greater works. So don't boast yourself of how many years you are in faith if you have no greater works to show. So the essence of being around is to do greater work because Jesus was restricted for three and a half years. And if up till now the world is yet to recover from three and a half years of ministry, what a great joy it would have been if he had lived for 50 years doing the same good works every day. But he had to go because he trusts you. He had to go because he believed is re replicate himself in us. May we not fail him. He has to go believing that we will continue where he stopped. Greater work means Jesus in his earthly ministry 
was at best because there was no aeroplane, there was no major means of transportation, fast moving vehicles. They got donkeys. They had to do a lot of trekking around. So the best of his ministry was all around Palestine. So he moved around Galilee, moved around all these Palestinian nations, and he couldn't go beyond that. That's a restriction. And greater works is that you can buy a ticket and do a meeting in Southern America and fly out of that and go to Central America and go to Europe and go to different parts of the nations of the world preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is greater works when you can reach more lives than he reached in his earthly ministry. That is greater works. That is greater works. So when it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and has anointed me, when that anointing has space of time, then we should do greater works. When the anointing you claim to have have space of time, then we should do greater works. We should do something more mighty. We got more time in our hands. And at times I smile when people say, I've been in this church for 25 years. I say, we clap for you. But what delivery can we see? 25 years of endless quarrel. 25 years of fighting everybody. 25 years of what? Can we trace you to a three and a half years delivery of mighty soul winning? And we can say the story of this church cannot be concluded without a chapter for you. Greater works is not in church titles. Greater works is not in being so friendly to everybody in church and become a mobilizer of people against their leaders and say they all believe me. That's not great works. In fact, that is a bad work. <laughs> greater works is growing the church from five members to 50 members, genuinely safe folks. That's greater works. Greater works for every believer to have a reference every month and say, I led her to Christ. I led him to Christ. I led that person. That family was sick. I healed them. I said, I spoke in the name of the Lord. That is greater works. Wow. May God count on you. Amen. May he count more on me. Therefore, anyone serving the Lord, I don't say any pastor, any Christian, anybody, serving the Lord for more than three years should boast of a greater work. So I do hope you'll stop announcing to me today how many years you've been saved. You will show me the proof, the impact, the delivery capacity of all the years God has given you to labor in his name here on earth. Very disturbing is the story of Joshua chapter 13, verse number 1. I use the word very disturbing because God began to speak to Joshua. So now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old. May God not announce your old age. Huh? Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. So how did Joshua spend his years? He got testimonies. He conquered some land, conquered some kings. That's fine. But at times you have no idea God's expectation of your life. And when you celebrate too soon, you will get old with much job to do. With much job to do. When you celebrate too soon, you'll be surprised when God announces that what you are dancing around, you are made to do much more than that. Greater works is in how many lives bow their knees to the king of glory by your life. 
by your life. Not by joint effort alone, but by your singular life. This is the month of June, the sixth month. Show me a life you have led to Christ. And I will stand in ovation for you that you are on the path of greater works. He said to Joshua, you got more lands. Very much land. That's the way King James Version put it. Very much land to be possessed. But you are getting old. You can run like before. You can jump like before. You are getting old. Time is catching up. And I don't tell stories. If you know me in those days, every soul that comes my way, I rescue them for the kingdom. Sir, if you can say it again now, it's a sign you have backslided. And you are losing the chances of greater work. And unknown to you, you are getting old. May the Lord not replace you. My greatest commitment on greater work today is the man Paul, the apostle. I love him. He's my model when it comes to evangelism and so winning. Here is cry from Acts chapter 9 verse 20. He just got saved. He just got saved. His blind eyes, God just restored him through a great man of God, Ananias. He just got saved and the Bible says, and straight away he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the son of God. If you look that in the message translation, it will interest you, an NLT translation, that a man just got saved. So, but then went right to work. Paul just got saved, went right to work, wasting no time preaching in the meeting places that this Jesus was the son of God right away from the point of conversion. Wow. He wasn't even waiting to be discipled. Something drove his spirit. If this salvation has been real to me, I want everybody, I want everybody around me to hear the same good news. You're a suspect today. If everybody around you never know what you stand for in God. Let's stop this Christianity that is cumbered with form fear and dances and endless arguments. I know when a man is jobless, you will argue on everything. Our greatest job is winning souls. If you are busy winning souls, there are things people say you won't hear. You won't hear. You won't hear sad comments. You won't hear who is not happy with you. You won't hear who is gossiping you. You won't hear it because something in your mind is just thinking about the next soul. The next soul. Greater works is when many lives turn back to God by your labor. By your personal labor. You can enter a church and you can point to 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 20, 50 people and say, by the grace of God, this man knew Christ by my labor. This woman knew Christ by my labor. Show me the proofs that indeed you value the salvation you have received by showing to me how many lives you have offered the same salvation. Straight away, Paul's passion drove him from the, the point of saying, I repent of my sin, and the next sinner could not escape. He offered them salvation. He offered them salvation. Preaching, yet submissive to authority. He wasn't preaching unguidedly. He went to submit himself to the elders of faith who schooled him, who stabilized him, and who discipled him. But while that process was going on, reaching the unrich, preaching the gospel to every sinner was like a normal life. May we get back to that lifestyle. Amen. When it is just normal to preach. Today, we are so sociable. We want to be so politically correct. 
You don't want to offer somebody the gospel and say, I don't want him offended. You just forgot that the gospel is an instrument of offense. You can preach it without offending the guilty. So the, the person you offend had one choice to bow on his knees and get saved or to hit you back. May you joyfully be beaten for Christ's sake. No salvation is genuine until the soul is caught. And the repentance is genuine. The result is a living conscience. So that even when you do wrong, that conscience stands like a weapon and hits you down because we can't waste you. But if a man gets saved because they advertise lunch after service and the guy is hungry and he came into church and ate and became a member because of the next meal, he's not born again. The day you stop supplying that food, you will find the next church where food is available. Because the heart is not caught. Salvation is from the heart, not from food supplies. So there are too many social styles, too many very appealing strategies to keep men seated in church. As good as it sounds, it does not guarantee the cutting of the heart. Nothing cuts the heart of a man like the word of God. Paul became a pestilence fellow. I love the word pestilence that was used there for him in Acts 24 verse 5. Acts 24 verse 5. They describe him as a pestilence fellow. Say for we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the set of the Nazarene. May you be one of our ringleader that to meet you is to hear the gospel and get saved. He was a ringleader of men who have separated themselves. That's what makes you a Nazarene. Nazarene is a separated life. Men who have separated themselves to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ anywhere they find themselves. I love the way they describe him here. You see, he became a mover. So this guy was a mover. And I love the way they said about it. He says it's a pestilence. You know what it's called a pestilence? It's better described in Yoruba language. In Yoruba, it's called Ijakalearu. It's like something spreading you can't control. No one that it says, we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover throughout the world because you can't control it. It's like the coronavirus. He became a virus that cannot be stopped. No vaccine is found yet. For that virus to hit you is to get saved. It's not a virus intended to waste you in eternal hell. It's a virus of true salvation. And he became a ringleader of men who do such things. That's how to do greater works. You do a greater work when you have a strong passion that cannot be tamed by the offers of men. That makes you a candidate of a greater walk. Paul was never threatened with true prophecy. True prophecy. He was never threatened with true prophecy that spoke concerning him that bounds and affliction await the owner of this gado as he goes on to Jerusalem. Paul responded, not doubting the prophecy, but showing his readiness to suffer afflictions and suffer wrongs if only he can get men saved. What a strong resolve. It's like the lifestyle of Paul in doing greater work is like to live is Christ and to die is gain. Once I have this breath, somebody will hear the gospel 
by my life today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 to 23, I need to read that. It's a very, very interesting story. See, for though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. In other words, if you will do greater work, you must mortgage your freedom. Are you willing to mortgage your freedom and preach the gospel to somebody next door? Forget about who you are. Say, I don't like to be insulted. You sign up to be insulted. You sign up to be disadvantaged. If only to make him known. It means I'm not keeping anything back. I'm putting all of my life on the line for these greater works of the kingdom. I became all things to all men. To all men. All men means all manner of faith. All manner of belief system. I will be there for them. All men. That I might win more souls to the kingdom. So Paul says I became all things. To all men. May we stop having these fearful coward believers. Carrying Bibles and unending stickers. Yet with a fearful heart. Can we have strong believers now willing to knock the door of everybody, of their neighbors, and offering them the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? This is very, very critical and very important. Let me begin to close you gradually, looking at the life of Paul, who did greater works for the Lord. He was never threatened. Paul was never threatened. He was bold. He suffered for his conviction, but it was a worthy suffering. He was denied many privileges, but it was a worthy denier. So he became all things to all men. No wonder him alone and his team wrote to thought of the entire New Testament. Him alone and his theme turned the whole world upside down with the power of the gospel. This is greater works. Out of Paul's life, aprons were taken out of his body to heal the sick, rebook madness, and do all kinds of miracles. He was an amazing man. A man so resisted not only by men, but by spiritual forces as a snake fasting upon his hand. A python snake spite him on his hand and he shook the beast into the fire and the poison couldn't get hold of him. Wow. Wow. Where are the Christians that having the Pauline spirit? These are the men that could do greater works. Finally, Paul began to declare in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. He declared, I have fought. So to do greater work is fighting your way through. I have fought a good fight. I had finished my course. I have kept the faith. Three important things. Jesus couldn't do greater works because his course was a three and a half year course. But he did a work that cannot be ignored. He said to the men of his days, if you don't believe me at all, believe me for my works. My work speaks for me. Believe me for it. So Paul said, I have more years than Jesus had. I have done greater work. I conquered the entire Asia Minor. I took the gospel to everywhere in Asia Minor. I could not be ignored in many nations. I caused a total turnaround in every nation of the world. Him alone. And his team, he caused a turnaround. I have kept the faith. I fought for it. I kept it. The faith will not fail in our hands. Amen. We will keep the faith in the face of stiff opposition, persecutions, and no matter what it is. So I had finished my course. That's what I pray to know. I pray to know when I'm done. I don't want to keep walking and keep walking. And in God's arrangement, I ought to have shut down. Death shouldn't shut you down. 
ability to discern, to know that what God wants you to do, you have done it, you have finished it, and then you can raise new set of leaders to take over from you, and you are still alive. And you can just move around with your wife and say, we finish our course. Let's go play golf now. Let's go do other things we didn't want, we couldn't do before because we are overcharged preaching this gospel. But now we know our assignment and we had finished our assignment. Death doesn't have to kill us as proof of finishing. While we're still alive, Paul wasn't dead here. He said, I finished my course. I know what he asked me to do. For me, he said to me, rich the unrich at all costs. Reawaken the child to her responsibility. And I'm seeing that happening gradually. By the time God believed and said to me, boy, you've just paid your dues. It will not be measured in how many people will gather. It will be measured on how faithful we were in doing our course. We trust that you've been blessed by this message preached by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated, Oloruru Ojo Ibadan. Or watch our services online via the Men of Isaka Vision Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can also listen to us on MIVradio.com. For inquiries, please call 0808-085-4818 or send an email to mivmandate2010 at gmail.com. Join us same time next week on Awakening Word Broadcast. God bless you. Yeah.